when you see what you see on TV, and I don't see anything different than you guys see, you know. I know if he's not out in the next 20 to 30 seconds, he's not coming out. There's no chance that he comes out. You know that. You just know that. You don't hope or nothing. And then while you think that, how I deal with that, because obviously you have to think about it, he's out. So uh, it is very tense, but in the, that 30 seconds which which it happened, it, it was over pretty quick, you know. And then how we deal it, uh, when I saw him coming out, he can have a broken leg, a broken hand. I mean, he's okay, you know. The, the only thing he needs to survive here. Uh, uh, because in my position, you know, if this car is on fire and the guy doesn't come, jump out of it, he will be done because it, it just cannot survive it, you know. It, it's, it, it, it maybe sounds brutal how I say it, but that's what it is, you know. Mm. You know it. You're not hoping, yeah, but maybe he could know. There's no chance. And you know that. It's not. The, you don't even have to think about it. So he comes out. Everything is good. He he survived. Now we have to deal uh, uh, informing his family, you know. And, 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 and again, I get my people around me, which at the time was the, uh, the, the director of comms. We said, how can we get the message out that everybody or as many people as possible know that he's okay? Because that is the most important thing because there are friends, there is family, there's a lot of... And if you want to call them up one by one, it takes you a few hours because everybody wants to give you the story. So uh, obviously, get a TV channel here, the biggest one you can, and tell, give the message because then everybody else knows. And that is what you try to do. So obviously, we got lucky there and we had to tell good news and not bad news, you know. But it is, you are lonely, but it is over pretty quick. The other scenario, COVID, uh, it was a never-ending story. It was every morning I had to get up and keep on hustling to, uh, to make it happen. But uh, you just, as I said before, if you want to do something and if one solution doesn't work, go and find the next solution, you know. Just keep on doing things, uh, 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 trying to, to make it happen. The plan in the beginning was different than it ended up to be. But in the end, we, we, we found a solution because... Uh, uh, Gene was pretty clear. I said, uh, he said, I, I don't think we can continue here if you don't find a solution. I, I say, he doesn't say you what the solution is. And I respect that because in the end, I'm in charge of it. He gives me the freedom to run a team. So I have to find solutions. I'm not upset that he doesn't say, oh, I give you all the money you want now. You know, what was the solution? Uh, just finding outside money you know, to finance it and, and, and trying to keep as many people on board as possible. There's a lot of small things, but the big thing is just trying to find uh, 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 the, the financing to keep on going. So can I just ask you a bit about self-belief and backing yourself? I mean, there's a few lovely examples of this. You deciding to create a US Formula One team, right? Most people wouldn't even begin because they think, oh, that's just crazy. Then there's a lovely story where Gene says, I need to get a super license. And you say, leave the super license to me with no idea whether you can get a super license to set up the House Formula One team. And then when it comes to the super license, someone says, you better get some lawyers. And you're like, nah, nah, nah. I haven't got the time or the money for lawyers. I'm going to do it myself. And then Gene rings you during COVID and says, if you can't find money, I shut the team down. How on earth throughout all of these moments do you find the mental strength to back yourself? I think this is great for people because people get derailed all the time, Gunther. And I think... Whatever you do to not be derailed is really valuable for people. I don't know how I do it. I just, I, I believe, and, and obviously it has to do with experiences, what you made in life, you know, you, you know you can do this. But also, for example, if, if Gene would have not uh, wanted an F1 team, would, would my life have changed? Yes, but I would have been still in a good place, you know, because I, I was okay. I, I didn't put myself under pressure of survival at that stage, you know. When he says get a super license, I was pretty sure I can get a super license because there is ways and I, I, I knew enough people, you know. You just get that feeling, you know, the confidence in yourself. And there is one problem, you, you shouldn't get overconfident. And th th that is the thing. If it is not achievable, I say it is not achievable, you know. Uh, but uh, like, like getting an investor in an F1 team, was if it works fine, if it doesn't work, still fine. You know, it's not if, uh, but once I made the commitment to Gene that I get the license, I needed to get the license because otherwise I called it failure. But I had enough confidence that I can get the license because at that point I had spoken enough people how to how to navigate it, you know, to get the license. The same when, when, when we had in the, uh, as you said, in the COVID period, uh, uh, I wasn't sure to, to, to find a way out of it, but... Uh, I was pretty sure, you know, uh, you never can be sure until you have done it. I mean, because that is arrogance, you know, and I, I, I don't want to come over as arrogant, you know, but uh, it, it was hard work and the pressure was high, you know. I got up every morning with pressure, uh, how, how we navigate this, you know, it's, it's like it wasn't easy, but uh, it's, it's just like, but it also has to do with the determination. If you want to do something, I think people can do a lot more than they think they can do. 
but you need to be committed. You know, you cannot hoping that it happens without you doing it. You know, so uh, I, I think there is uh, millions of examples where people just went beyond. Uh, uh, you know what what uh, uh, what they normally should be doing to get something done. And are you patient? Because I think all of these things take time. I mean, look how long it took you to get that pole position in Formula One, which I'm sure was an incredible moment. But patience is something that we don't talk about often enough. Maybe in the modern world, where everything happens quick. I think I've got long-term patience, but not, uh, sometimes my short-term patience is not of my best. <laughs> my family tells me that sometimes. You know, you need to be more patient. You know, I get, uh, you know, little things, uh, I'm very impatient. But uh, but, but when I see something, uh, and the patient in little things is normally because some somebody did something stupid, if I can say it, you know. It's like, I, I'm like, guys, I mean, this is not, I don't need to be patient because you you don't do your, your part of it, you know. But long-term patience, I think that is more, a strategy, you know, and there uh, you need to know that you will achieve it, you know. So how long term do you think? For me personally, not very long term. Honestly, I don't think uh, what the, what is Gunther doing in five years, he doesn't know if you ask him, you know, uh, because I don't uh, I don't really care. I mean, it, it shouldn't sound again, uh, you know, I, I neglect it. It's it, it more like uh, it, it will be okay, you know, but I, I don't think it is long term. But for the team, I think long term because I feel responsibility. It's the same for my company. For these things where, where, where I, I know other people is involved and they need to have a, a long, mid to long term plan, I feel more responsible than that for, for that than for myself. I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm now uh, uh, late 50s, you know, so you think, okay. I will be okay one way or another, you know, but there is people which are building a career up and you need to help them and give them the possibility because we made a promise once you put a company in place, you made a promise to people that they will have a job, they can have a family which they can count on, a job to, to feed their family, you know, that is responsibility. So I, I think in that things, uh, mid to long term, mid at least, if not to long term, but on myself, um, you know, whatever happens, I, c I will deal with it, you know. What are the three non-negotiable behaviours that you and the people around you have to buy into? Uh, honesty, uh, accountability, you know, that they know that, that they're accountable for it, and hardworking. What is your biggest weakness and your greatest strength? My biggest weakness can be some, sometimes uh, being impatient, you know, in, in the short term, I sometimes end my coming out because it goes over to people get almost scared when I have my blasts, you know, and my biggest strengths, uh, uh, I think my determination to get something done. What is the thing that people get wrong about you or misunderstand most about you, do you think? They think I'm not approachable, which I am actually as a human being, you know, I'm, uh, people are almost scared sometimes of me, which is, and I don't know if it is maybe to do also with my looks, you know, because I can look very angry, I know. It, you know, it's like people get afraid of it. see your angry face again? No, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little frown. <laughs> nah, yeah. that's not scary. Yeah.